Hey everybody, good morning, how you doing? Hopefully this is funny well. Uh, everybody's still sleeping, it's kind of an early morning. It's uh, uh, not too bad, you know, it's, uh, we're starting to see a little blue because of the weather that we were having as well as all the fires and such. So that seems to kind of be settling down a little bit. There's been some welcome fire, uh, some welcome rains, so that's really nice too. So hopefully all those firefighters, all those smoke jumpers and everybody have been staying safe and healthy and thank you all very much. Okay, but today I wanted to do a couple things. One, I gotta talk about this box, uh, the drawer system for the Nissan Titan, which you guys haven't seen yet. But also I wanna do a quick announcement. You guys have to check the videos on the uh, belts, how many belts. Remember the video Ella and I did? She helped me produce in video uh, about how many belts a knife maker uses and everything. Um, you gotta go in there and check your comments because I picked somebody for the winner. That's right. Uh, I think it was, uh, oh gee, I'm trying to think who that was again. It's It's been about maybe two weeks since I did that, but uh, you guys got close. Uh, but the winner came within about, I think it was 17 belts, which was pretty cool. So um, video's coming out. I don't want to wait anymore. Uh, you know, it's October, so I want to make sure that the winners got that. Also, the Rotopax winner. Uh, remember the video I did on the uh, mounts over here? Well, I picked the winner too, so you got to go back to that video. Check your comment and see if you're a winner. And then you got to email me so let's get to this box alrighty so let's get trip unlocked here I have not washed since the uh, little trip I did down to Oregon um, I did that trip with uh, Greg and a few other folks and uh, we got together on there Casey was able to come out and uh, help guide us a little bit through some of the areas as well as uh, show us a couple really cool places to go uh, but it was kind of you know just it was just that little 10 group we all happened to be getting together at that time so it's pretty cool to get together with everyone, especially Casey, to take some time out and show us. There's the box right there. Now, it's not much of a how-to video. I am going to try to quickly uh, describe a little bit about what I did and why I did it, as well as the materials um, going through that. Um, I've tried to film this video three times already. It's been over 35 or 40 minutes. Yes, not a good thing. So uh, what I'm gonna quickly do is start out with all the materials that I used. Um, I ended up going to a uh, researching a company that makes boxes similar to this. They use half inch or five eighths inch thick MDF or slash MDO, um, and then they, you know, mount it all together. They put aluminum trim around it and they rhino line the entire thing. Um, I was going to go that route. Made in America. It's actually made here locally in Washington State, uh, but at the time uh, a little bit outside the realm of my pocketbook. Uh, when I designed the box on their website, it was up to $4,000. Uh, so that, was, that, uh, that wasn't that an option. The other option was a plastic polymer style box. Uh, it's nice, it's fairly durable, very lightweight compared to the other one where the other one was around 400 and some pounds. This one's about 100 and some pounds and very lightweight, uh, but it's plastic, not too bad. But uh, some of the lids were a little bit shaky when I saw those, you know, they snap in. People have said, yeah, they shake, but I have never lost one. I didn't really care. I had the canopy, uh, so I wasn't too concerned about that. But it was a thing I lost a lot of space where the boxes that were made, uh, they're made out of wood, MDO, MDF. They allowed you a lot more storage space than the those polymer style boxes. The drawers are more of an angle. There's a big gap in between the two drawers that you lose a lot of space, as well as on the sides because on the sides they make a lid for the entire plastic one and then there's a little cubby that they give you and by doing that you are limited to what you can put in that little cubby the box system i liked a lot more because even though it's just a box in the back of the truck it allows me to store a lot of stuff on either side of trip or on either side of this box in trip along the wheel wells and you're going to see one of those items uh, and why that was so important okay one of the first things was um, now the materials, I used the MDF or MDO material for this. Everything was half inch. Um, I used five sheets of that and those five sheets ran me about a hundred dollars. It was about 20 bucks with tax, not counting my veteran discount. I get a military discount at Lowe's. Uh, I'm registered on Lowe's.com as a veteran and uh, you get 10%. So, uh, but so I'm just gonna give these prices to where I bought them and I was a little bit in a crunch or because I didn't do as much research as maybe some of you might be able to do. Um, maybe I paid an extra a couple bucks here and there. Uh, the first off was the sheets. The sheets were not the, that was the second most expensive part. There's some little ray or something flying around here. The plywood material, the MDF MDO, was about $20 a sheet with tax. 
um, the handles that are on here, they're lockable handles, they're a T handle, um, and they use the same key when you get the set. The set comes with two keys in each handle, but they're all keyed the same, so that's really cool. So you get four keys, and that's great for one lock. Uh, they lock their T handle. Uh, you can adjust the T handle, everything else, by the collar that's inside the drawer. This set was right around that $40 mark. Uh, but the one most expensive thing that I bought was the drawer glides. The drawer glides that I have here, I bought a, uh, two sets. When you buy it, you get a set, so you get a pair, and that pair is right around that $250, $275 mark at the time I was doing this. So I bought two sets. What's really nice is two things. One, they extend 60 inches. That's right, the bed is a, a five and a half foot bed. So once you build the box and then you put the drawers and everything in there, having a drawer glide that's 60 inches extension is awesome. It was very, very, uh, uh, this is something I was really looking forward to because uh, it, it bared the most amount of weight at the, the furthest distance. Uh, the second thing is going to the weight, it's 500 pounds. That was really nice. Uh, to have one set of drawer glides hold 500 pounds is super cool. Uh, the, the box itself is four feet wide, 50, uh, 66 inches long, and it is 12 and three quarters high. That's the outside dimensions. The drawers are nine inches high, 20 and a quarter inches wide, and 63 and a quarter inches deep. So they're big drawers. You can put a lot in them. So having the 500 pound glides was really important. One of the other things you're going to see in the box is I got aluminum. I did aluminum along the whole top, except for the back. The top, the top of the box in the back is not, doesn't have aluminum on the edge, but the sides in the front do. The reason why I did that is because I knew that I would be putting the box in here. And if I was taking things in and out of the box, I didn't want the raw edge being rubbed against any objects and materials, especially some heavy metal ones. Uh, so I put aluminum and this is one inch by one inch on the front and then it's inch and a half by inch and a half on both sides. Uh, that's all been screwed in. I went ahead and I drilled each hole and I chamfered it, meaning I, I angled the hole a little bit so I could put the screws in there and they would be flush. You know, they would flush with the aluminum so they're not sticking out like a little bump or anything like that. Um, the bottom of the drawer of the box itself has aluminum inch and a half by inch and a half along the sides, the right and left sides, as well as inch and a half by inch and a half in the back at the bottom of the box there. Furthermore, I put ribs across the middle of the box, and that was eighth inch thick by two inch wide aluminum stock. Now all the stock, I should say, is an eighth inch thick. Um, the reason why I did that on the bottom is by picking up the box and sliding it in and out, um, you would slide it a little bit on its edge. So I wanted aluminum to be on the edge as I'm pushing the box in and out, again, not to have that wear. As well as as I'm driving, even though the box would be loaded, even as I'm driving, you get some shifting or moving. I wanted aluminum there, not having the bed of my pickup truck rubbing against the box itself. Now, the box itself, um, after what I did is I took all this material and I ended up uh, using my router and I routed out about uh, 3 16 um, of material because it's half inch material. I just routed out 3 16 and what that was to do is I just wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of an edge that the pieces of uh, material would sit like this and they wouldn't kick out, um, if that makes sense to you. Sometimes people use a dado blade and you would use a dado blade to a certain set. It's a bunch of set of blades with teeth and you run your plywood or your flat stock material through there and it creates a channel for the plywood to sit in. I did that, but I used my router. Um, the reason why I did that was to, again, keep the panels from sliding in and out. Plus it let me lock everything together a little bit better. Uh, once I did the routering of everything, I would go ahead and I would apply a uh, tight bond glue across all the seams, and then I would put it together and I had a staple gun that shot 5 eighths of an inch long by a quarter inch wide crown staples. And those staples are used for flooring. Um, you put down quarter inch floor, uh, underlayment, and you'd use a staple to staple it down on the subfloor, and the staples all have a glue. The, the entire strip of staples is soaked in glue. So as the staple is shot through the material, it heats up real quick by friction, and that glue adheres to its, its surrounding materials. Uh, so I use those staples like that. So tight bond and those glue um, contact staples, uh, they, they're by Senco. Uh, I know Porter, uh, Porter Cable makes them, as well as Boss Stitch and some other companies. Um, so all the materials have all been uh, glued and stapled together. So the inside of the box itself, the middle uh, divider is actually two layers of the half inch material. 
I cut that by the, the height it was. It was like 11 inches or something like that. Um, I cut the height and then the full length of it, I glued tight bond across both pieces, put it together, worked them really good to rub all that glue in there. And then I stapled on both sides of it. Then I went and I glued the bottom, uh, centered it, that groove that I put in there. I glued that, stapled that in place, and then repeated the process on the sides. Again, all the sides as well as the drawers themselves all ended up being routered. Um, the drawer boxes, I ended up building all four panels, the front, the back, the left and the right. And again, I did use the router and I routed out a little channel that the bottom of the, the material could sit inside like this again. And it, once again, tight bond and staples on everything. As I was going through the process, I would stop in certain stages and I would start to apply uh, coating on all of the material. Uh, the first step I did is as I was going through it all, I bought a, uh, it's by Valspar, I bought it at Lowe's. It was about $35 and it was a deck paint. Now I've used a deck paint in the past, but I used it where it had an abrasive material inside it. So as you paint it on your deck and it dries, it creates a non-slip, non-skid surface. I didn't use the abrasive part, but what I did is I just bought the paint itself because it's a very durable contact paint. Uh, so I bought that, I had it primed, or I had it tinted. It came as a, a medium, like light, they call it dark gray, but it's actually fairly light. And I went ahead and I had them tinted to the black. It came out to being somewhat of this like gunmetal kind of gray look, uh, but we coated everything with two coats of that primer first. Then uh, I started thinking about that one company that makes the boxes and they rhino line everything. And I knew that I could run over to the local auto parts store, which was AutoZone, and I bought a can of uh, the bed liner, roll-on bed liner paint. Um, that was about $80. So um, I took that, and as I started going through the process, I started to apply coats of the bed liner on the box then. Uh, the lid of the box is, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, Ooh, you see that? I don't know if you guys caught that. It was a bee went right toward my ear. Holy cow. Uh, anyhow. Uh, the t lid of the box is um, one inch thick. I took two pieces of the MDF MDO material and I again glued and I stapled the pajeezers out of it both through the top of this and from underneath. After doing that, I went ahead and I started applying uh, the bed liner on all these. The lid of this, the top of this box, as well as the two sides and the back and the drawer face all have four coats of bed liner. And that's on top of the two coats of the deck paint that I used. Um, then what I went and did is the box itself, uh, the bottom of the box, before I put the aluminum on there, I had applied five coats of bed liner on top of the two coats of the deck paint. Might be a little overkill. Um, and yes, I would have to agree. I, probably the deck paint wasn't necessary, uh, but I didn't think I was gonna go the route of the bed liner. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. So if you're gonna do this, I would say you could probably just get by without using the deck paint. But my one thinking is, is, is maybe, uh, well, no, I, I don't think you would need a primer because that, that, that bed liner really covered well and it was thick. And if you're applying three, four, five coats like I did, having a primer, I don't think is gonna be a requirement. But suffice to say, I did it because of maybe in, I was rushed or just improper planning, but um, the box has plenty of coats all over it. And that's the, the outside and the inside. The inside of the drawers, I went ahead at after painting the drawers twice with the uh, deck paint, I had gone ahead and I started using the bed liner. I, I put a face, now this is the face that you see here is actually the second face. There's the box itself that's got four sides and a bottom. And then I made the face which attaches to that. And the face has also been glued and stapled in really good. As well as I actually ran some screws in from the inside going outwards uh, to really secure it. Uh, but the inside of the box, the actual inside part had at least two coats of the deck paint and then on the bottom part, I actually took some of the bed liner and I painted the bottom of the drawer with the bed liner two times. So I had that coating going on. Uh, again, the faces all have four coats of the bed liner on top of that. And then I went ahead and I attached the hardware on here. Um, I did apply a, an actual fifth coat on here. I washed them all clean and I had some deck paint left over. So I went ahead and I applied a little bit more onto the face of this. So now opening the drawers, like I said, the, the drawers they lock. They have a good T-handle right here and the T-handle folds down flat like this. Um, it's got a little cover right here and there's a little bit of a foam 
like gasket inside here, but I don't know how well that's going to be waterproof or watertight. It definitely is not. Uh, but it definitely would cover from getting most of your debris and your crud inside here. Um, one of the other things I'd like to say, is, as one of the videos I was trying to record on this, um, what was real nice about it, I just come back from the, that trip down in Oregon, and um, you could see the fronts of these were all dirty. You can still see the tops kind of dirty. Uh, but what happened is, is not because of the, the ca canopy itself, it's uh, the powder, the, 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 that sand that we were driving through was like flour. And it actually would circle around, like if you guys are familiar with the vortex, it comes off the, you know, the, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. Well, as you're driving, you're stirring up all this this powder, and it would come up under between the bed of the truck and the and the the, the uh, back hatch here, okay, the tailgate, and it would swoop up. And I had the lines from the bed liner here, and I had these lines going up and down across the box here, so it got really really dirty and dusty. But what was nice is I didn't get much of anything inside the boxes themselves. Uh, so. I would say these are they are working, but they're not completely weather tight and environmentally safe. So anyhow, so let's get to the box. So open it up, turn the handle like this, and you start to pull the drawer open. Now that's deep, 63 inches, somewhere around there, 63, 64 inches, super deep, over 20 inches wide and nine inches high. Um, yeah, super cool, I'm really, really pleased with it. And uh, when it comes to loss of space and everything, again, the box is being four, 48 inches wide. I'm losing uh, the half inch, both on the uh, one inch between the walls of this and that, and then three quarters of an inch for the glide itself. So that's an inch and three quarters here, and an inch and three quarters here. So that's not a lot of space to be losing when it comes to storage capacity. Super cool. Now, again, going back to the other two products that I'd mentioned, this one is very much more indicative to the one that's made here in Washington and out of the wood material. I think they use maybe five eighths. Um, I couldn't get it and they didn't, they had three quarter inch, but they didn't have enough for that uh, for my application. And I thought maybe three quarter inch I wouldn't need because I was going to do a double lid. So instead of three quarter inch lid, I went to a one inch lid um, and the sides and how I was going, I, I, I assumed you know what happens when you assume sometimes, but I assumed that the way I was gonna build this was gonna work out pretty good. Uh, the bottoms of their boxes, I do believe they use a half inch material, but I think everything else might be 5 8 but I, I can't remember offhand right now, uh, but irrelevant. Uh, this is working out pretty good. Time will tell how long this lasts and how durable it is, but I have to say I just put um, seven or 800 miles on the truck, both highway and off-road, and off-road we did some very, in a very not intense I guess you say it's some of the heaviest four-wheeling I've done in trip and he was loaded in this box is similar to that company's this box is gonna be somewhere around at 400 pound mark uh, so it's definitely not light but having a one to a half ton truck I was able to take that into consideration as well as this drawer system allowed me to empty four of those rigid boxes that I normally carried with um, I have all my uh, um, I have my recovery gear in here I can put, if we went out target practicing, I could put my ammunition and my firearms in this. Um, and then as well as the other side, I have all our kitchen and our cookware and our stove, as well as some of the rooftop tent stuff and the awning uh, supplies and our toiletries and our propane and so on and so forth. So having this really allowed me a little bit easier access and uh, more convenience. Now, the one reason why I like the idea of having just the 48 inch box like this is again, the access that you have on both sides of the wheel well and the box. What's really nice is I recently got a Pro Eagle floor jack uh, from Lolo Overland. Josh uh, had these for sale over there. And when I stopped through, of course, I have to stop over at Lolo and they had these on the showroom floor. So I picked up, this is the two ton floor jack. Uh, super cool, maybe I'll do a little video about those later, but really happy about these made in America down in California. Um, there's a lot of cool details. Maybe I'll do a video on it later, but in the meantime, you can always check out Pro Eagle uh, on YouTube here. Just type in Pro Eagle uh, floor jack. You'll get a lot of cool information about that because there's a lot of people that are using them, especially in the off-road racing industry. Uh, so it's starting to drizzle. It actually started drizzling a few minutes ago. Uh, gonna wrap this video up again. Uh, you're looking at somewhere around 809, 8, 
or $900 to build this box. Um, again, $100 for the wood materials, $40 for the uh, T handles, the locking T handles. Uh, I forgot about the aluminum, what that cost, but maybe about $100 for all the aluminum that I bought with the screws. Uh, the drawer glides were the most expensive at somewhere around $500, 500 pound glides. Yes, they don't lock when you pull them back, but the bigger drawer glides did not lock. It was only those small ones, the 24 inch or 32 inch glides. They had the little levers that lock them closed and open. Uh, these didn't lock. Um, uh, we do have a little hole drill on the side. I put a little pin through there. I didn't show that, but it's not that important. Um, uh, let's see what else. The bed liner was around $80. That was probably a pretty expensive op, uh, upgrade, but um, I actually got all those coats on there and I have a little bit left over. So you could probably do at least six coats on a top and a bottom and all the sides as well and still be pretty good. Oh, and lastly, I did cut up a old yoga mat. Not old, I bought a, a cheap yoga mat from uh, Walmart. It's about a quarter inch thick. I bought two of those for $8 a piece. I cut them and put them in the bottom of the box. It was only to keep noise down a little bit and to keep things from bouncing around on against the wood, the, the bed liner covered wood. Um, so I did that too. Again, maybe something you don't really need to have to do, but I did it anyways. Um, that's it, I'm gonna wrap this up. Remember, if you wanna know if you're a winner, you gotta jump over to those last two videos, the belt and the, um, the canopy video I did, the whole walk around with the truck and stuff like that. So uh, go check that out, see if you're a winner, and then you can shoot me an email. Other than that, guys, I'm gonna let you go. So remember, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thank you very much. It is keeping me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket. We'll catch you all in the next video, bye.